I felt like, oh my God, you know, it happened to me and I am so sharp, right? I've been single for a hundred years. I should have seen it coming, but it was too good to be true. And I felt like, I felt like an idiot. Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. Once again, I want to welcome back Trevor Brandon Scharf, the author of Done Being Single, right there, and the co-host of Done Being Single, along with her hubby, Robbie. Thanks for being here again, Trevor. Thank you for having me. Today, uh, we have a topic that probably most people have heard of, love bombing. What you may not know that apparently this is back. It, there's a big resurgence. And some people believe it's due to like these reality shows, like the Golden Bachelor, the Golden Bachelorette, whatever, right. to where this, this behavior, this unhealthy, fast, get the deal done dating behavior is is promoted well that's a whole other conversation the golden bachelor bachelorette um yeah they gotta move fast but in real life no it doesn't work that way and there's something wrong with it and it's very manipulative let's back up one second for those who really don't know what it is what love bombing is you just gave a pretty good explanation it's it's just everything moves fast you're giving Mm -hmm. tons of compliments i mean it's just not natural to move that quickly so Mm -hmm. early on in the relationship Mm -hmm. and why would somebody do that and it, it it actually can be some sort of a mental I don't know if it's illness, but certainly pathology, pathology. Yeah. Uh You need to be aware of it. So you know what's happening to you. So Mm -hmm. let's go through some of the signs. The first one here, they give you needless gifts that give giving uh, might be a a love language for some people, but this becomes a problem when the gifts are unnecessary, unwanted, extravagant, and over the top. Yeah. You know, anything in the beginning is great and wow, right? And then it becomes excessive at some point and not really authentic. It almost is for the gifts for them. It's not really gifts for you. It's they're, they are, right, satisfying something in them that makes them feel good. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I mean, and I don't think we have to do much explaining on this. I mean, if, if all of a sudden you're getting this expensive necklace or just something that just doesn't yeah. make sense on the second date or third date, or even the first <laughs> after yeah. the first date, yeah. there's something wrong there. And if you express that, that, you know, I'm not comfortable with this. And if they don't take no for an ant, I mean, if, if this continues, you know that there's an issue there. Number two here, they're in a rush to lock things down Mm -hmm. that people who love bomb just just jump the gun and and just say stupid things. Why I'm saying stupid things, (laughs) but they share fantasies about eloping or go right to, oh, you're my soulmate. I mean, just something that's so over the top after just a few days. Oh, bad. Very, very bad. So misleading. So, again, manipulative and ultimately hurtful. I have a friend who was love bombed by a guy who, as this is a, a single mom friend of mine, and she was fairly newly divorced and very vulnerable mm-hmm. and meets this guy that could tell probably that she was an easy mark, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And told her things like, oh, we're going to have this beautiful future together. I'm going to take care of you and your daughter. I'm going to provide for you. You're never going to have to worry about anything. Um, mm-hmm. It was just a bunch of Bullshit. And um, and she bought it hook, hook line and sinker. I didn't. I saw it. I knew what was going on. And she was too too fragile and vulnerable to to push back and say, I you know, she just wanted to believe it. And of course, it didn't happen. Well, that's and that's a danger in it that that you want this to be. You want it to be true, especially if you're attracted to the person. And, and if, you're, if you are vulnerable, you're in a, in a situation where you're really looking for love, you want this to work. It's, it is. It's horrible. It gets to be emotional, be emotionally yes. abusive. Yes. And shame on him. Shame on that guy. When you're in it and you're hearing these beautiful things and you're thinking, oh, especially being a single mom was just, could you be, you know, could you give this woman any more false hope? Right. And some, and they broke up and then. Uh... Again, you're describing the classic symptoms because what, what, what a love bomber, especially an intentional love bomber who incidentally there's 
you know, they're insecure, they have attachment style issues, that's what they're doing, what they're doing. But it's all about control, the back and forth, you know, they, they give the love, then they take it away. And that's yes. when the victim, if you will, you feel like, well, what did I do wrong? I mean, you just, you just sent into the state that that is, again, I say, emo- emotionally, you know, a, a, abusive, which actually leads us here to number three, that they're always available and demanding of your attention and that they get angry if you spend time with somebody else, basically they're trying to isolate you from friends and family. Uh, my love bomber, we, we didn't get to that that far. Um, mm-hmm. It was pretty much uh, out done in, in a couple months from Thanksgiving to New Year's. And mm-hmm. But that, what you're describing, sounds so um, sort of diabolical and, and weird, almost Charles Manson, um, Charles Manson level <laughs> love bombing. Like yeah. you can't see this, you can't go here, you can't do that. You're mine, you're all mine. Well, it says that you know they may present unfair ultimatums that force you to choose between them and other people you care about and even other responsibilities like hobbies, or maybe you're a runner, you know. Well, no, right. don't you right. know, let's do this. Yeah. So yeah. if you're experiencing that, that's a huge, huge, huge red flag. Huge red flag. If you're feeling um like isolated. Uh, alienated, isolated um, from the people you love, your your friends, your family. Uh uh-uh. uh, mm-hmm. red flag, huge. Well, and like the next point here, they over communicate their love for you. We've touched on that, but also to the point to where they want it's like like they can do it on social media they post all the time about your relationship uh, to where it's, it's important to them to yeah. somehow publicize you know make make this legitimate you know we're in a relationship put a stamp on it yes which just i just want to say a thing about social media and that so I was, you know, I was single for so long and always, and I had boyfriends along the way. I was so careful not to post too much too soon until it was real. I didn't even post when I met Robbie. It took quite a while. He's actually the one that changed his um, relationship status. status. Yeah. And I was like, ah! oh, I was so, I didn't want to jump the gun and mm-hmm. be too prem- premature about everything. Oh gosh, overposting about someone too soon. So that's a telltale sign for sure. And they're good at this, right? Because they sense that, you know, like my friend who was an easy mark at the time, okay, they, they're good. They can sense you're fragile or you're vulnerable or you're needy and and you know it's it's so sick and um they either are coming from a place of as you said um insecurity right and anxious attachment because they need it they are the ones that need the reassurance it's actually they who need the reassurance or they're just you know egomaniacs that Mm -hmm. have to have to conquer they have to get it. They have to get you and say that, you know, they got her and then, you know, on to the next, you know, you want to hear those things. I did. And when this, when I was love bombed, I thought, oh my God, mm-hmm. he, you know, this guy looked deep into my eyes and took my hand and said these yeah. things to me that were so like earnest. And I thought, mm-hmm. oh, this is, he's the one. No, he wasn't. Yeah. How, how did that end? It was literally just before Thanksgiving. And of course, oh, you have to come meet my family and have Thanksgiving with us. And okay, so that. That's another sign. That was too family too early. Mm -hmm. That was too soon. Mm -hmm. And then Christmas. So then it was a month. Okay. Then Christmas came around and then he called me and he said, listen, I've got a Christmas party I've been invited to. And I thought, oh, he's going to introduce me now to his friends. And right. And then he said, and I said, Oh, that's funny. Cause I'm invited to a Christmas party too. Why don't we go to yours and we'll go to mine. And he said, Oh I, no, how about you go to yours and I'll go to mine and then we'll meet up later. And I, I thought that is odd. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. Cause I don't know. I thought he's so into me. Mm-hmm. Been, right. Yep. So, yep. and then, and then the week before that, and then the week after that is new year's. Right. And then we're getting ready to go to a party and he's all dressed, we're dressed, I'm dressed. And he, he's over to, to come take me to this party. He said, you know what? I just don't, I don't think I want to go. Wow. And I said, what? You're dressed, we're dressed, we're, we're going, it's New Year's Eve. He said, you know, I just don't think this is, 
going to work out. It sort of dumped me on New Year's. That is so interesting that you say that because mine ended on basically on New Year's too. I actually flew into to California when I was still living in Dallas for the New Year's for our New Year's date. And then he dumped me right before then. And it was the same thing. It's just, it's, it was so hot and heavy. And then all of a sudden, and that's the danger in this. And that's why I want to talk about this again, especially because it's resurging is you're just going to get hurt. Just pay attention to these symptoms because it does like one of the, one of the questions they asked you in one of the articles is what if someone feels special and not love bomb? What if I just feel special? You know, do I have to end this? Because again, you want this to be, you want this to be real. If it's, if it's too good, too soon, you know, if it's too much too soon, if it's, you'll know, you'll now having watched this episode, you'll yeah. really know, right? So, and this goes for both men and women because women can love bomb. Oh, absolutely. They, they can, they can tell you all kinds of uh, great things to keep you, uh, you know, uh, on the hook. They, it, love bombing to me is throwing out, and this, I know there's a word for this. It's like breadcrumbing or Mm -hmm. um, there's something else where you throw out just enough bait to keep them swimming. Mm -hmm. You know, you just keep throwing it out there a little bit, a little bit, right? Um, Yeah, breadcrumbing or benching. Right, 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 Mm right. right. Um, This is how scammers happen to love scammers Mm -hmm. where they just come on so strong. And they, you know, we all know the stories about that. And, oh, you're so gorgeous. You're so wonderful. I want to take care of you. Oh, and by the way, I need some money. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, when that happens, if anybody ever asks you for money, I mean, that, that again, that's a whole other conversation. That's too, a whole it, other just, thing. I know, yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's over with. But you made a really, really good point, And that is that they keep, you know, the, the breadcrumbing and that because that is one phase of, of yeah. love bombing that like the psychologists have like three phases and I don't want to go into all that. You know, if, if you can Google it, if, if you are interested in it, uh, but there is that you pull back, you just give a little, you come in and that's where the control is. So real, you know, they, they just, they have you, they have you. It feeds something in them, right? Yeah. It feeds some oh, insecurity or some neediness in them. It's the whole thing is just such a sort of twisted game. You can't, it, you can't uh, lose by taking your time with these things. And yes, there are real, you know, honest brokers out there that do want to be with you and do find you attractive. Yeah. So, so, you know, don't, don't poo poo that. Well, and that's, that's where the difference I think is because they ask you, you know, how should you react to a love bomber? And really there's no good, good answer to that. It's really a matter of recognizing it yeah. and then just slowing down. Like you said. Yes. Because love bombing is ultimately, as I said, it is not sustainable. So all of these beautiful compliments and all this flattery and gifts and things, I mean, it's nice, but you can't keep that up. Yeah. How do you uh, ultimately know the difference? It's really in your gut. I mean, if you feel over overwhelmed, I mean, learning to listen to your gut is really ultimately where it is. I mean, I knew, I knew my gut when it first started uh, that there was, this is too good to be true, but oh my God, true. was it fun. And yeah. just, just pay attention to that. And like you said, again, you brought up so many good points in this is don't go negative. You know, don't, don't poo poo when somebody is really a wonderful romantic and being genuine about it but your your gut will tell you if this is oh, yes. over the top yeah I'll, I'll let you end the segment trevor if you are the victim of a love bomber okay and we i i think all we all have in some way right and some small even friends can love bomb right oh absolutely there's going to be some shame you're going to feel like a fool you're going to feel like a sucker I did. I felt like, oh my God, you know, it happened to me and I am so sharp, right? I've been single for a hundred years. I should have seen it coming, but it was too good to be true. And I felt like, I felt like an idiot afterwards. I felt like, how could I have not seen this, felt this? But again, it was before we, it was, there was a term for it. Don't feel bad, everybody, if it happens to you. It's, it is normal. You're human. Thank God Mm -hmm. you're, you know what? You have a heart. Isn't that nice? Yeah. You you yeah. felt you got you know persuaded, and that's kind of a good sign that you're normal. I also want to say um, to those who meet people that are earnestly uh, complimentary, that dig you and want to know you and give you compliments and flatter you, believe it, believe them. Okay, if it's when, within reason, 
if it's, you can tell, I mean, you'll tell if they're an honest broker, you'll tell, you can tell, yes, you are attractive and desirable and believe it, go with it and thank them, be appreciative and um, assume that they are being honest. Absolutely. And it's not that you can't see the red flags or that they're not there. It's the willingness to see them. I know that's, that's what it was with me. And you're absolutely right. I felt just, I was embarrassed. I was just embarrassed to tell my friends now, you know, that, oh, it's over. Oh. And I tried to explain that it was, it was so humiliating. And that's, we don't want anybody else to go through that. So just be aware of this. Yes, yes. And I will say this, this might make for a good, a next good episode about okay. imposter syndrome. Mm. Okay. When you get the thing that you want, right? When you hear the things that you've been dying to hear, and it's true, and it's real, and you mm -hmm. deserve it, right? You don't mm -hmm. believe it. You feel mm -hmm. like, um, what? You're talking, who? You're talking about me? Yeah. You, you, you like me? No. No, and that's something called imposter syndrome, like that you don't believe it because you don't feel it. You don't feel, but you are worth it. That, that actually would make a good segment, Trevor. Yes. We'll talk about that, okay. that later on. Well, Trevor, thank you so much. As usual, we will link to all of your information to your coaching page. Trevor, as you know, is a fabulous dating coach. If you want to dig deeper into some of these topics here, please give her a call. All oh, the yes. information is in the show notes and pick up the book wonderful information. You. you were Thank so you. vulnerable, so open sharing your life and your experiences that we can all learn from. And Treva, I look forward to having you back again soon you got on it. Second Thank Act you. TV. Love you. Thank you so much. Bye.